Hi friends! In this video I'm going to show you 4 tips that will make your dimension lines looking more professional in your projects. With this I mean, when we plot our drawings, how can we always keep the same sizes of text, extension lines, etc., even if we are using dimensions in different scales? How to keep the same spacing between the dimensions and the objects? and how to create a template file with your own personalized dimension styles. Let's start! Draw the dimension line at a specific distance from the object. Suppose we have this example and we need to add dimensions to indicate the lengths of these lines. In fact, that's easy to do. We just need to activate the command dimension linear Click on two points and finally click again to place the damage line, right? Ok, now I'm going to do the same, but for the left side. And also let's add a horizontal dimension here in the bottom. As you can see, the dimensions are correct and there is nothing wrong with them. But as you can notice, I use the random distance from the lines for each of the dimensions. Ok, maybe it's not a big deal, but in my opinion, it's better if we use a specific dimension spacing for the entire drawing, or even for the full project. Let's see, I'm going to do this again. This time, I'm drawing a dimension line measuring this section. But then, instead of clicking on a random location for placing the measurement, I decided to have it, for example, at 500 mm above the line. And when I see this extension track line, I type 500 and press Enter. In this way, I will have that distance between both objects. Then, for the left dimension, I use the same method. I hover the end point, drag to the left and type 500 again. Finally, I repeat the same process down here. Type the 500 mm. And now you can see that all the dimensions have the same separation between the lines, making the drawing looking nicer. Of course, there are always exceptions in a rule. Let's use the command continue for the dimensions above. Ah, first, I have to choose to select the object that I want to continue. I click on select, then on this extension line, as you can see I am adding another dimension connected with the first one, and finally add a third dimension by clicking in this last corner. Of course, as you can see, this last dimension is far away from the line, but in this way I can have all the dimensions in this side all along the same reference line. Finally here you have an example of this method applied in a floor plan. Set specific lengths for extension lines. Another nice setting is to set a fixed length for the extension lines, those bars that limit the measurement. Using the default settings, when I add more dimension lines all along this side, and look that I can do it pretty quick by just clicking in each intersection, they start from the points where I click with an offset gap that is also specified in the Dimension Style Manager. I'm going to access that menu by clicking on the icon located on the Dimensions panel. Select the Dimension Style, this one annotative, and click on Modify. In this section below, Put the tick here to add the fixed length on all the extension lines. As you can see, the length here is 3mm, and actually, as this is an annotative style, this value means that the extension lines will measure 3mm in a paper after printing it. Click on OK, and you can see the result. Use annotative dimensions, especially in projects that we use more than one scale. This layout is a drawing about an elevation of a building. The viewport above shows the complete drawing in scale 1 per 100 
and below I created two viewports with the details of the windows and doors. Ah, and the scale is also smaller, 1 per 20. As you can see, the dimension lines are in the same size in all of the viewports. Now, suppose that I created them with the standard dimensions. I would need two different dimension styles. The ones on the elevation, the text height has to be around 200 mm. And the dimensions on the details, I would need a style of 40 or 50 mm of text height. And in addition to that, in order to make them to look exactly in the different scales, we need calculations to make them with the same proportion. Yes, hopefully there is a much easier way to do this, and it's with the annotative dimensions. Let's make this exercise. We are going to draw annotative dimensions in the drawing above, which has the scale 1 per 100. And then I have another viewport for this section with scale 1 per 10. The method is easy. First of all, set the dimension style that is annotative as our current style. Annotative dimension styles can be recognized by this symbol before the name, it's easy. Now, before selecting the style, let's modify it and set the text height as 2.5 mm. And save the changes. Then, I'm going to set the scale in the model space to match the viewport scale of the full drawing, it's 1 per 100, and put some linear dimensions there. Here you can see them in the viewport. Then double click on the viewport of the detail, zoom in until you find it and set the scale to 1 per 10. Then let's readjust this to put the drawing more or less in the center. Back to the model space, I change the scale to 1 per 10 and add two dimension lines on this detail here. And yes, this time I'm leaving the dimensions at a distance of just 50 mm from the lines, because the scale here is smaller. So again in the layout, you can see the dimension sizes look exactly in both viewports, and if I double click on each of them, you can see that they have the correct scales. One last information in this third tip. Annotative dimensions only display in viewports that match their exact scale. Did you see? If I change this to 1 per 50, they just disappear. Use template files with your own dimension styles. This is a good practice if we want to keep the dimensions with the same appearance in all the projects we are working on. Suppose you have a file about the project of the building X, then your next one will be about the building Y, and then the building Z, as you will probably use different DWG files for each project. To keep the same dimension styles, the best is to have a template and use it whenever you start a new project. So, in a new file, which can be from a template you have created, and I don't have any objects here in the workspace, I'm going to the Dimensions tab on the annotative menu and click on Manage Dimension Styles. So these are the default styles. I can modify any of them or create a new style if I want. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I click on New. Then on the first blank I should write the name for the new style. Start with means that I copy the settings of the style that is showing here. In this case annotative. Below I decide if I want to use annotative dimensions by checking this box, and finally I can continue. So now we can make the changes that we need, text, arrows, primary units, etc. I'm going to add just a suffix here as the symbol of millimeters, because I put it on the title, and click on OK to save the changes. After I can add more styles. For example, let's say I am creating a similar style with the same settings, except for the suffix I'm going to set meters. And for that I put a scale factor to convert millimeters to meters, of course this is in case I'm making the drawing in millimeters, 
And when you are ready with your styles, let's save this file as a template. Choose the name and save it on the default templates folder or create a new one. In this way you can start your projects with the same template and you don't need to edit the dimension styles again. Ok, it looks like we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Cutting Black. There you can find all the content of tutorials for beginners. See you on the next occasion.